Welcome to E39 Source. This is Ryan with my 2002 E46 330XI. Um, by the title, you can figure out what we're doing today, uh, and that would be the Sirius XM install. So I did a similar video quite a while back, um, probably in February or so, on my 2000M5. We did a Sirius install with all BMW parts, and this being a 2000, we had to upgrade the radio, the navigation computer, all kinds of different harnesses, adapters, brackets to get uh, factory Sirius, and there is my antenna on this car. So we're gonna be doing a similar job today on an E46, but it's a heck of a lot easier, um, at least for me. And this is gonna be really difficult to make this DIY apply to anyone with an E46. But let me um, first state what I have. So uh, it is a production 1001. That's a pretty early 2002 model year. Um, so made in October, of a one, but a 2002 model year. I do not have navigation. This is not a navigation equipped car. It is just the standard in dash CD player. Um, I think that's about all we're gonna need to know is build date and non-navigation. If you have nav, um, that gets a lot more complicated, similar to uh, the M5, which obviously has navigation. You'll need to update to a Mark IV computer for sure. You'll need the BM53 radio that supports Sirius and auxiliary capabilities. Um, but in this car, it's going to be easier. Now, prerequisites. We need a CD player that supports Sirius. Uh, likely not the one that came with your car. So this is a 10 of 01 car. I took out the CD player, which is really easy. You just need a pry tool to pry off this wood piece of trim. You can almost do it with your fingernails. Start on this side, then work over here, pull it out. You'll see two Phillips. I think they're just Phillips screws. Loosen the screws and remove the radio. Then you'll see a sticker on the radio with a part number and a build date. Here's what I would do. Type your part number in Google, uh, followed by the word Sirius, and go out and read. Read some forums. See if that part number is uh, in support of Sirius XM. Also, uh, you can go to eBay, type in that part number, and read the description of similar radios for sale. If they're advertising it's Sirius, you're good to go. When I took this one out, it read a, a 2006 build date. I think it was like February of 2006. So it had been replaced prior to my ownership of the car. Very cool. That means that it supports auxiliary and Sirius. And I've already taken advantage of auxiliary in there and, and Bluetooth. So uh, I already have that. But today, obviously, by the title, we're adding Sirius XM. Um, so my radio already has the correct part number. So that really helps. Now, we're going to need a couple things. Let's go in the trunk. We're going to have to be installing, or we're going to be installing the Sirius module in the trunk. And then we need an antenna. Yours may look a little bit different. This is a non-navigation car. It's pre-wired. You can check up here on your trunk lid. Pre-wired for BMW six disc CD player, uh, but it doesn't have it. So the wiring's there, but this car wasn't optioned with it. And it's not in there. I think that if uh, you're wired for it and you do have it, you'll have a little pocket or a little pouch there somewhere where that thing lives. Uh, otherwise, the, pre the wires for it are back there. If you're not pre-wired for it, I don't think this is going to be possible. So hopefully you are pre-wired for that, for the Sirius install. Once you have the correct MID in the car, and you've confirmed that you have either a six disc CD player and or the wiring for the CD player, we're going to talk about the parts that you now need to purchase or otherwise attain. Um, I guess we'll start off with the actual radio. Now, this is, there's, there's, I think there's three revisions of the Sirius that will work in a non-navigation car. If you have a navigation equipped car, you're gonna need a different part. For the non-navigation car, really the part number you want is 84110141981. However, good luck finding that. This is the last one I found. It was on eBay. Somebody bought it new years ago and, and never used it. I don't know why, but here it is, unused. Uh, so I was able to find that on eBay. It is a BMW OEM part. There's the number again. Um, that's the one you want. There are different revisions. Those will probably work just fine, uh, but you're gonna have to find the part numbers on those and make sure that they will work in an iBus E46 without navigation. iBus is just the language of the telecommunications in the car. So first thing is a module. Second thing is the antenna. The seller of the radio happened to include this antenna. It looks several years old. It is an Interstate Connections SIR 3000 Sirius Satellite Radio Certified Sirius Antenna. It's 10% larger than the one in my M5, I don't care. 
Uh, it looks like it comes with plenty of wire and uh, the connector right there. So you're gonna need some sort of an antenna. It doesn't need to be that, but it will need to work with that. Now, if you'll notice, the antenna has a, a one plug setup. Now we switch over to the Sirius module and there are two plugs. Let's first walk around. So there is a fuse. This is the three pin connection. We'll be using the three pin connection from the CD changer. Six pin connection, CD changer. If you want to retain access to your CD changer, you're gonna need the CD slave cable, which will plug in right there. And here's the antenna. There's two. How obnoxious is that, that BMW put two antenna outs on here and you can't just plug that into one of them. You need an adapter. And the part number for that adapter is 84110392102. This is from ECS, it was like $12 or something like that, maybe 20. Made in China. So you're gonna plug the blue to the blue, the white to the white, and then that turns it into one, which you will then plug in your antenna to. So those are the three parts we're gonna need. Moving on to the actual DIY. I'm sorry I took so long to go over the prefacing information, but you know, to do this right, you need to know what you're doing. So step one is remove the carpeting. Pick up the hook, pull it out. You're gonna see your spare tire and your jack and probably how dirty everything is in here. Step two is to come over here and locate this black plastic tray. Um, if you've got the CD changer, there could be a little cubby for that right here, something like that. Mine is simply only pre-wired, so the wires are back there, and that's what we're going to find right now. Uh, we need to remove this black tray. It's held in with two plastic rivets. We're going to need a pry tool. I'll show you how that comes out. So here is our pry tool. We're just going to lift up and lift up and then remove these. Be careful, they kind of will fly out of here once you get these pegs out which you guys have seen these BMW clips before, I'm sure. Pull those out and then we'll gently lift up and try not to have that fly out and get lost. Simple enough, we're now gonna pick this thing up and just give it a tug. It's kind of sandwiched under the carpet. You pull it and it'll just free itself and put it aside. I've tried to clean that, that's as good as it gets. Um, so now we're left with this, uh, which we can see some wires going to the tail lights. Um, that really isn't anything that we want. We wanna pull the carpeting back now. Uh, here in the trunk to be able to see what lives behind the carpeting. Um, in navigation equipped cars, you're gonna have all kinds of nav computers and probably an FM module back here, different brackets. Again, this is non-nav, so it's gonna be a lot easier. Um, I've got this little hole here. It looks like there might be a clip that's supposed to kind of secure that. This car doesn't have a clip. There's also another hole up there. So I'm guessing that I'm just missing some hardware. Um, so if you have hardware there, they probably just pry out or turn and twist out. Remove that so, uh, so the carpet's free and you can pull it out. Uh, in addition to that, we've got this metal hook right here. We're just gonna pull the carpeting up on top of that hook so it frees up so we have some more space. Now with the carpeting loose, just take it and pull. It's pretty flexible. It also sandwiches behind some of the trunk interior here. Pull it out and out of the way can kind of let, let it sit over here somehow. <laughs> I'll figure out a way to hold that over here and tell you what we need to find. Here's a look at the very dirty uh, interior of the trunk behind the carpeting. And we're gonna see, um, see the amp. This is the Harman Kardon amp. It's pretty small, it's only got one wiring harness going into it and it fits in this little bracket here. So behind that is what I'm going to refer to as the pre-wire bundle. That's what we'll call it, the pre-wire bundle. This thing probably hasn't seen the light of day in a very long time. Now, if you actually have the six disc CD changer, you should be able to poke around back here, find your changer. Again, I don't have it, so I don't know where it's supposed to be. Um, but you're just gonna need to, to rob that three pin and six pin connector. If you're pre-wired but don't have the module, it's in here. So I'll probably need my second hand to uh, loosen up this little tie that goes around this whole bundle. Maybe not. Pull the tie off, and then that's gonna leave a bit of a tourniquet style thing that's very sticky with age and poor adhesives. Loosen that up and take it off, and here they are. Three pin on the right, six pin on the left. It's quite long, like four feet long, and that's exactly what we need to plug into our Sirius module. Now, for the, the sake of doing it right, BMW makes a bracket which is still available, it's like 48 bucks, I'll include part numbers in the description below, that goes somewhere in here. 
I don't know if it replaces this and also has a place to put the amp on there. I don't know if it screws into these extra holes here. I don't know how it works. And quite frankly, with this car being a winter beater car, I'm not too concerned about it. However, I would recommend that you do it right. You buy the bracket and you put it in there. Um, however, the carpeting here has cutouts and notches in it that kind of form to fit around this bracket. If I go and I move the bracket out, the carpet won't fit and then I'd have to replace that. That's my primary reason reasoning for not putting the bracket in myself. It just adds a bunch of cost that I can't justify for this car. If it were that one, you better believe I'd be all over buying the brackets. That was a lot of bees there, but um, yeah, that's where that stands. Check the part numbers below. Um, in my case, I think I'm just gonna kind of tuck it up in here behind some metal, uh, secure it so it doesn't rattle around and get damaged, but uh, I just want it out of the way. Looks a little bit messy, but this is what things should look like. We'll have the three pin cable going into the three pin adapter. Same deal with the six pin. They only fit one way, push them until they click. If you do have the six disc CD changer in the back and you still want to retain functionality to that, we're going to need a slave cable that'll plug into the Sirius and then it'll turn it the other end. I'll have another three and another six, I think. I'll leave that part number down below as well. It's on ECS. I think it's 12 to $15. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking the car wiring car wiring three and six pin into the Sirius. And then if you have the six disc, you're gonna come out of the Sirius to the six disc. So this will fit in between the car and the CD changer. Here's the adapter for the antenna. That snapped right on there, white on white, blue on blue. Now this was a little honky here. See, I've got a little crack in that yellow piece now. The antenna really didn't fit as well as it should in there. I'm hoping it's the right antenna. If it's not, I'm going to have to run to Best Buy and take that adapter in there and tell them I need an antenna for that. The internals look like they made up male to female, but this white piece right here doesn't look like it fits real well, or that yellow piece. So um, I've just very temporarily stuck my antenna right there. It's magnetic uh, just to see if things work. Um, I'm not going to clean anything up until I do verify that I have a connection and possibly even activate the Sirius service on my account. Um, but at this point, we can take a seat inside the car, put your key in the ignition. For the sake of noise, I'm closing the door. I hate that beep. You can see right now the radio is in uh, auxiliary mode. We'll hit mode. There's FM, there's CD, and there is Sirius, channel 184. We'll see now that it says acquiring, so that's one of two things. It's trying to acquire a, uh, a signal to, it says no channel, acquiring. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, either the antenna that I have isn't gonna work or it's just not getting reception. It's in my garage. So I'm gonna unwind it and go out and put it in my driveway and see if that changes things. Okay, Sirius XM preview channel 184 appears to be working. So my secret with that was um, pushing the antenna in actually quite hard. Um, in fact, so it pretty much entirely disappears and I may actually get some pliers on that and tighten that up. If this proves to be an issue that this antenna is not right for the adapter, I will change that. But if I can make that work and I don't have to go out and buy another antenna, I definitely plan on doing that. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and activate the radio subscription using the, uh, the numbers on there uh, to activate this individual radio to my account, ensure that all that works, and then we'll talk about how to uh, install the radio somewhere in the car and then route the antenna somewhere else. When you uh, activate your radio online, you just need to type in the number, starts with a bunch of zeros, select your plan. Uh, if you don't have an account, make an account. Then you'll get to this point where it says send activation signal. You do want to go ahead and verify that your antenna is um, it has clear clear access to the sky. You don't want to be in your garage or a parking deck or something like that. So as I said, I have not installed it in the car yet, so it's just out here in my driveway. I am going to go ahead and activate everything and get everything working before I install it. So here's what we have. Uh, we've sent an activation signal to your radio. It may take up to 15 minutes before the activation signal is processed and sent to your radio. Do not adjust your radio during uh, this process. So I guess I'm just going to let it sit for 15 minutes um, until about 3 o'clock. And then I'll come in here and try to mess with it and see what happens. All right, guys, this seems to be working really well. Um, we're getting song titles sent over to the MID screen. I don't know if it's called that in an E46, but that appears to be working. And, and one nice thing I, I didn't expect to see was if I hit the SAT button, it'll go through different programming. Programming 2, programming 3, programming 1. So there's effectively um, 18 presets instead of 6. 
So that's pretty cool. And the M5 with navigation, you'd expect it to be better. It is not. You only have six presets, at least that I've been able to find. So now that this seems to work well, we're gonna be done inside and uh, we're gonna try to figure out how to route the antenna. And just like everything else we've done today, there are multiple ways to do it. Um, I think I'm gonna attempt what I did in the M5 and that was running it up behind the seats or behind through the carpeting behind the seats, the, next to the seats, up into the interior then sandwiching the cable down here by the um, C pillar and the rear deck and then putting it right there because I don't want it on any paint. If I have to put it on paint, it's not a big deal on the E46, but I'd rather not. So in order to do that, I think we're gonna end up unplugging the wire from here. Unfortunately, that was pr a problem to get in there, but, um, and then running it up through one of the several areas in the car that uh, wires run through. So let's go in the back seat now. And this E46 happens to have split fold seats. If your doesn't, you yours doesn't, you've probably got some extra work cut out for you. Step one is gonna be to open up this split fold seat, which uh, has a little handle right here. So we'll open that up and slide it down. Now we can see that our carpet's in the way. Now, if we were really in a hurry, I mean, we could just slide it under here and, you know, fish it back here and, and run it up. But uh, I'm not in a huge hurry, and I'd like to do it right. So we have this side piece here near the seat belt. Let's get a hand over here, behind it, under it. What's the best way to do this? Up top, maybe? And give it a firm pull towards us, maybe the right side. Yeah, if I had my right hand, that'd be easier. So get a good grip under it and pull it like that. Let's at this point take our seat belt and get that out of the way by putting it behind the headrest. Look at that. Now we can see we have this piece completely separate. Move that out of the way. Um, this is really kind of supposed to come out um, when you remove the seat. This is that thing that holds the seat in there. So maybe depress some tabs and pull. We'll figure that out later. Oh, there it comes. All right, so then that needs to come back over here and uh, just slides into that receptor on the back of that piece. So, um, there's a couple of holes here that we can utilize. I see a big one here, lots of wires going back, probably to the amp, and it's got some, uh, some heat insulation, sound deadening material. Just pries out, look at that, look how easy that is. Uh, and again, this is only applicable to coming up into the interior, and then we can just use a credit card or something to slide it back there and put it in the rear window, and I think that's gonna be my plan. So I'm gonna disconnect the antenna from the adapter, start with this end, and Figure out which hole I'll poke it through and I'll let you know how I do. Guys, this car is too easy to work on. UE46 people have it easy, at least in uh, instances like this. So I didn't even need to remove any of this insulation here. Find your biggest harness. There's enough room to stick a finger in there and just pry your, um, the part at the end of the connector, or the, the antenna cable through the hole. So now we'll come in the back. Hopefully you have long arms. Just reach up in there, get a grip on it and pull it through. Look at that. Probably pull about 90% of the length through. Then we'll route uh, the actual antenna where we want it. Let's say we want to put it right here. You're going to see it on a tan headliner. I don't care. Maybe put some sticky tape behind it. Wedge it. Yeah, there you go. Just wedge it down into the glass. Then we'll just poke our wire down on the C-pillar. If you want to remove your C-pillar, um, which I may or may not, depending on how well I can just shove it down there, probably have to pop this light out, and then there's probably a screw behind that. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull through the rest of the cable, hide that wire. Then I suppose I should back the car out in the driveway, maybe give it a test drive, make sure it does work behind the glass before I button everything up. But it works fine on this car and I've been driving around like that for a couple thousand miles. So I ended up popping out the C-pillar light with that pry tool that I used before, looking for screws or something. There are no screws. You just reach your hands in there and give it a firm pull and you'll see that it's held in with the same kind of clips that hold the door panels on the door, if you're familiar with those. So that just kind of comes out. You can either slide your light through the hole or disconnect it, like so. And um, we'll move the C-pillar out of the way. Try not to get too many fingerprints on that. They get really dirty. Uh, and then that shows us what I believe is the FM antenna. Uh, I read online that some people had to replace these when doing this. I see no reason why you would have to do that unless you're upgrading your radio if you have navigation to support uh, serious so I don't have to touch that I don't think but at this point I can just take the uh, antenna wire and actually push it under the rear deck material so it will be completely out of the way and completely hidden just like that man that's easy and then if you want here I suppose you could run it behind this sound deadening trim 
but uh, really your seat's gonna cover that, so there's no need. So I'll clean this up, and then we'll be ready to put it back together and give it a test drive. Too easy. It's actually done better than BMW's sloppy wire harnesses. Look at that, why is there so much slack on that? You can barely even see that black little antenna cable up behind the trim, behind the C pillar, and right back there. Now I left myself some wiggle room, so if I need to move it out from this logo, or I wanna keep it away from the speaker because the bottom of that's magnetic, so I can move it around. Should I ever have the rear deck out, I'll probably move it over here and mount it on that, cha on that child safety thing. You know what though, for right now it doesn't matter, and if it does prove to move around too close to the speaker, hit into the glass, we'll use some double-sided tape or maybe some cement, probably not, to put it down on the rear deck, so. Um, at this point, you can now take your uh, extra antenna wire in the back, and there's quite a bit. In fact, I'm almost in my neighbor's yard. And uh, we'll just use a zip tie to kind of clean this up and tuck it back there. Then we'll figure out how we're going to put the Sirius box, unless you're using the, the bracket. We'll figure out how we can safely put it back here so it's not going to rattle around or get hurt or something. Here's the setup. Got some small zip ties and zip tied a bunch of the antenna wire. Um, essentially, I'm storing the slack and the three and six pin connectors in between the car and the amp, as well as all the bundled slack in the antenna adapter. I'm aware the amp needs to breathe. That's why it's put an inch and a half, inch and a quarter away from the car. The wires don't take up much space. I don't think that's going to be a problem with, uh, as far as the amplifier's breathability. Now, the actual module, it is very difficult to get it to fit back here, as, as in slide it in and then slide it over, but I was able to do that. At this point, I'm sure that over time, it will rattle around, make noise, possibly get damaged, so that's not going to be good enough. What I am going to do is go and try to find some zip ties and figure out a way just to secure it to this. I don't want it to move around at all. I don't want it to rub. Um, there's enough breathability back here. It's going to have a nice big pocket of air, so if that gets any sort of heat, I think it'll be fine. Uh, and I did actually use a uh, pair of channel locking pliers to install that antenna, and uh, I think that'll work. So at this point, it's just a matter of securing it, um, which I'll let you know how I do, and then we'll put the carpet and the seat back together. So I realize that I'm not going to win any awards here with what I've done, and the M5 would definitely <laughs> receive different treatment. Um, but I took three zip ties, and I made a loop around the uh, sleeve cable adapter. Now this is not real high tension here. It's not gonna hurt the uh, soldering joints on the board or anything of where that adapter is inside the module. Then I looped around a couple other zip ties and then I went behind the washer and the nut on this top mount screw for the, uh, for the amp. So it's in there pretty tight. It's not gonna move around or hit anything. I just don't want it to, one, make noise and two, get damaged. So nothing's under too much stress here. The antenna's nice and free. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. So that was my method, my method with that. I highly encourage you to figure out how to make the adapter work. Keep in mind that's going to take more time and cost that I'm just not willing to do on this car. But uh, you guys probably should. So uh, with that all taken care of, I'm going to make sure that the antenna connection looks good. In fact, I may put an extra little zip tie around that just to clean up some wires. I'm sure we don't get rattling like that. And then we'll reinstall the carpeting. Um, but right now, let's focus on the back seat, and I'll show you how this cushion that we removed goes back in. There's two things we want to look for. One, there's a hook here, plastic hook that fits in this middle gap right there. And then over here, you'll, it's very it's mostly common sense. This right here fits down in that slot. Once you line that up, you want to make sure that this right here is lined up to slide in this square hole and then smack it with your palm and you're done. Then you can put your seat belt back and fold your seat back up. So here's uh, how the antenna is going to sit. I put the trunk back together. Um, this is a pretty easy job. Definitely the hardest part is ensuring that your car is pre-wired for a six disc changer, assuring that your um, CD player in the front is new enough to support auxiliary, and then routing the antenna and finding a system or a solution that works uh, for you. So I just drove this car about 12 miles and it cut out twice. I went under a bridge the first time. I would expect that to cut out. My M5 does as well. And the other time was here in the driveway. I think it was just struggling to get an initial connection for about three or four seconds. So it appears like that's going to work. If I have any issues, I'll just reroute the whole antenna and put it here or something like that. But I really don't anticipate that being a problem. That'll bring us now to... Um a little interface demonstration. And I was a little nervous how Sirius was gonna work on a 14 pixel display uh, when compared to the full 16 by nine and the Mark IV system in, in the M5 with navigation. But I'm actually pretty impressed with it. 
So the radio's on. I'm going to have the volume uh, pretty much all the way down for, for these clips. But um, I can't figure out how to get it to constantly display the uh, the time or the um, the track and the station number, the artist stuff like that. It, it seems to want to default over to time, which I guess is okay. But if we want to call that up, we'll hit the SAT button. Notice on the left, the bottom left there, it's SR2. There's SR3 and back to SR1. I'm assuming SR is satellite radio. So there's satellite radio one. We can now have six presets within satellite radio two. If we hit SAT again, now it's SR2, satellite radio two. Guess what? Another six presets. SAT three, six more presets. So 18 presets instead of six. That's a huge upgrade, or that's a huge plus, I suppose, over the older system in, in my M5. Um, the INF button information, that brings up, I guess, the number we would call to activate Sirius. We're on the preview channel 184. But if we go back to satellite one, my first preset is, um, I think it's called hits. Hits one, and then we hit information. There's no artist, but uh, it will go through and then scroll the name of the station, the station number, hits one and station number two. It's a little slow with the scrolling. It maybe thinks we don't know how to read. Ella Hemder, so I guess it does give some artist information. I'm assuming that's the artist of that track. Or I suppose it could be a song title. But uh, you will need to set up your bass, treble, fader, balance settings. Uh, again, once the Sirius module is installed, after that it does seem to retain those settings. So that's how things look. As you can see, it goes right back to time then again. Um, going between modes, there's my auxiliary FM CD player, and then it does say Sirius for three or four seconds while it warms up and then connects. So, seems to be a uh, pretty solid system. You can see the time in between um, selecting stations. There's 70s on 7, we'll go up to 80s on 8. Probably about two seconds. That's right on par with about any car I've been in with Sirius. I am outside right now. We'll go to preset four. And there it is. So sound quality is, you know, I believe Sirius is broadcast in 56 kilobits. So don't expect, you know, crazy sub rattling audio quality. You're going to have better quality from your auxiliary, even when pumped through Bluetooth. And that sounded great in here. And this probably sounds 80% as good as the uh, AUX did, uh, which is good enough for this car and, and long commutes or whatever I want to use this for. But that's the Sirius install. If you have any questions about installing Sirius in your E46 or your E39, feel free to leave a comment. But keep in mind that I'm really only knowledgeable and familiar uh, on vehicles that would be similar to mine. A facelifted E46, um, non-navigation or a facelift or pre-facelift E39 uh, with navigation. Other than that, I'm not really going to be able to help you a whole lot. I'm just not familiar with the other systems. And honestly, I don't have five hours to do research for you and figure out what you need to do. You guys are capable of going to Google and, uh, and doing that yourselves. So good luck. Hope this helped you out and we'll talk in a future video. Bye-bye.